Welcome, everybody. Are you having a good Trailblazer DX? <laughs> Woo! Welcome to the future of user management. If we haven't met before, my name is Cheryl Feldman. I'm a senior director of product management at Salesforce covering the user access features. And I'm joined today by two incredible colleagues. Ben? Hey, everybody. I'm Ben Sklar. I'm a senior product manager at Salesforce. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you trailblazers. Jamin? Hi, everyone. I'm Jamin Hall, a user experience architect, proud partner to Ben and Cheryl on fixing the admin experience. You'll see this again at the end of the presentation, but we want to remind you, feedback is always a gift, especially your feedback. So please tell us what you think at the end of this presentation by filling out the survey, and let us know if you want to see this session come back at future events like Dreamforce and Trailblazer DX and maybe other events. You've probably seen this slide about 8 million times today, and you'll see it 8 million times more over today and tomorrow. But I want to remind you, please only make purchasing decisions based on features that are generally available today. Because everything in this presentation is forward-looking. <laughs> How many of you came to a previous Future of User Management session at Trailblazer DX or Dreamforce? Raise your hand. I want to start this presentation off by saying thank you. Your feedback has really helped us improve and make admins more productive than they ever were before. And we're asking you to continue on this journey with us and partner with us by giving us feedback on some of these new experiences that we're going to show you. And for those of you who haven't been to, the, to a Future of User Management session before, welcome. We are so excited to have you. And when you see something that you love, we want to hear you clap. We want to hear you shout. We want you to get really excited. We want you to be as excited as we are. Before we jump into the features, I want to align with you on some of the challenges that you have today. So one thing we hear consistently from admins is how much time you're spending troubleshooting. In fact, in recent surveys that we took, we found out that you're spending 20% of your time troubleshooting. That's the equivalent of one day per week. That's crazy. And our features, let's face it, they're difficult to learn and use. I had the honor of meeting with some new admins yesterday at the Admin 201 training, and I could just see and thinking, this is so much to learn and so much to understand with just the amount of permissions that there are and how many features we have to control user access. And something that comes up all of the time at True to the Core is why is everything so many clicks? Everything is hundreds of clicks. Do you think we understand your challenges? Yeah? So let's talk about fixing setup. But before, <laughs> but before we do that, we want to recognize an incredible trailblazer, Andrew Russo, who stood up at True to the Core at Dreamforce and said, Salesforce, you've got to do something. You've got to fix this experience. And I'm really excited to pass it over to my colleague, Ben, to talk to you about fixing setup. Thanks, Cheryl. And again, thank you to all of our trailblazers for giving us that feedback. It really is a gift, and it's really given us the fuel that we needed to prioritize a major overhaul in this space. So I'm really excited to talk about how we're going to fix setup. Are you all ready? <laughs> so the first question is, where do we start? And we've got to start with somewhere specifically, because Fixing setup all at once is like asking us to boil the ocean. And I'm sure you all know that's just not possible. So where are we going to start? So we asked ourselves, what are the most used areas in setup? And surprise, surprise, shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, it's the user access and user management features. 
That's why we're going to be starting with user access. One in every three clicks inside of setup are to these areas, and it is a top three case driver into support. All of you are trying to answer basic questions like, why can user A see object B, but why can't user B see object C? You're spending over 20% of your time troubleshooting and trying to get answers for these very basic questions. We're not giving you the tools that you all need to be successful, and it's just unacceptable. We need to do better. And there's over 500,000 plus idea exchange points that are still around for the user access areas. So there's a lot of work cut out for us. So what are our three steps to fixing setup? How are we actually going to do it? Number one, we're going to start by delivering brand new features to setup. And with these new features, you'll be able to get answers to those questions about access. Once we've delivered new features and given you all the tools that you need to be successful, we're going to start rebuilding our experiences. We're going to be moving from classic to lightning so that all of the experiences in setup are fast, they're consistent, and accessible to everyone. But how are we going to do this? And how are we going to do this quickly? The only way is for us to build a reusable platform framework for setup. And this is really important, so I'm going to say it a second time. We are going to be building a reusable platform framework for setup. So let me go over why we're doing that and what problem we're trying to solve and what the problem even was. So I'm going to paint a picture for everyone. Imagine that you're moving to a new apartment and you walk over to where the fridge should be in that apartment, and you're holding up your iHeart admins magnet, and you're about to put it on the fridge. But then you realize that the fridge is missing. And what if I told you that you couldn't just order a new fridge? What if I told you that the only way to get a new fridge into your apartment was to order all of the raw materials for that fridge and build it from scratch, from the ground up, and that's the only way. Well, this was the problem that we had at Salesforce. For our teams who were developing inside of Setup, they had to build the whole fridge before they could just put their magnet on top. So something like putting a magnet on a fridge that should just take a few seconds took days, weeks, months, years, however long it took, because they had to build that whole fridge first. And that's just not acceptable either. So how are we going to fix that? We are finally bringing reusability into setup so that we can innovate faster than we ever have before and finally build consistent experiences. We've heard your complaints that setup looks like it was designed by teams who don't talk to one another and everything looks different. And that is finally changing with our new UI framework for setup. And with this new framework, we have an example here of a summary component. And you're going to see a lot more of this soon, later in the talk. But this is how we're going to do it. And we're going to bring consistency to set up once and for all. <laughs> and this is just the start. This is just the first component. We're going to have many more components very soon. And so just to recap, fixing setup is really a three-pronged approach. And we're starting with user access really is the first consumer of this new framework. And already with this framework, they've been able to develop brand new features, which you're going to see soon, in a matter of weeks that would have taken them months or even years to build without this framework. And with it, we're also going to be able to build a co-pilot for admins. So those questions like, why can't user A see object B? Why can user B see object C? You'll be able to ask those questions and get answers back in real time. No more cases needed to support. And finally, it's going to allow us to move from classic to lightning again so that we can have fast, consistent, and accessible experiences. <laughs> All right, so some of you might be a bit skeptical and thinking, this sounds too good to be true. It sounds very visionary. 
It sounds like something that's going to take us many years to deliver. But I'm here to tell you all that the future is now. It's right now. And I'm so excited to pass it back to Cheryl, who's going to give all of us a preview of the Summer 24 release built on top of this new setup platform. Thank you so much, Ben. Can we give Ben a round of applause? <laughs> Not only for his incredible presentation he just gave, but for his partnership in building a setup platform for all of us. So let's talk about one of the challenges we started to talk about earlier in the presentation. It is so many clicks to grant access to a user. So you spend all this time creating a user, you fill in all the fields on the user record, and then you realize you have to assign all the permission sets, all the permission set groups, public groups, queues, licenses, the list goes on. I'm super excited to announce that in the summer 24 release, user access policies is generally available. This is a feature, thank you. This is a feature that we've had in beta for the last few releases that many of you have given us feedback on. And what's really special about user access policies is you as an admin without code can set criteria about your users that can be either user attribute based, meaning fields on the user record, or entitlement based, such as what profile they're in, what permission sets they have, what role they're assigned. And when a user is created or updated, you can automatically assign access. <laughs> Thank you. And what you can assign is permission sets, permission set groups, permission set licenses, managed package licenses, public groups, and queues. And not only that, when you, the summer release hits your orgs, you'll be able to have 200 active policies, as well as you'll be, have a new order field that will allow you to order in which order you want your policies to trigger. Not only that, how many of you have probably come across something where you had a mass reassign access and you're having to pull users out using something like the data loader and then doing all this transformation and then figuring out all the IDs for the permission set, permission set groups, groups, queues, they need to re-upload. What if I told you you don't need to do that anymore? You can just use user access policies to apply access in mass and not only do you have a grant, you have a revoke. And we're also introducing a new feature alongside user access policies called recent user change. And, <laughs> and what this shows you on the user access policy is this starts the connection between setup audit trail and user. And believe me, in the future you will see more and more, but this is super important. As you're using user access policies, you will be able to see all of the changes that happen to a specific user from that policy. So let's see user access policies in action. So we've gone ahead and already created a policy. So I'm going to go ahead and automate the policy, which turns it to an active policy. And I'm going to set this to automate when a user is created. So I'm going to automate this. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new user. And now, let's enter some information about our user, and I'm going to click Save. And like magic, permission sets, permission set group, and public group were automatically assigned. So now you've granted your user access to a permission set, a permission set group, and a public group. So what does your user actually have access to? You think you're probably going to have to click into all the permission sets and permission set groups and all the report and dashboard folders to figure this out? I'm so excited to announce that in the summer release, you will have the first version of the user access summary in one click, you will be able to see 
what a user has access to from user permissions, object and field permissions, custom permissions, and public group, and queue membership. Are you so excited about this? <laughs> I am so excited. And then how many of you have used that view summary button on permission sets and permission set groups? I have heard so much positive feedback. It actually started me thinking, we need to summary all of the things. But, and that's where the idea of the user access summary came from. But what we also wanted to do is we wanted to have a better experience for that. And so what I'm super excited to announce is in the summer release, the permission set and permission set group summary are moving into our new setup component. So you'll have a much better UI for this, as well as I heard your feedback, I had so many comments from you, custom permissions are now included. As well as, as, well as from a permission set, you'll be able to see which permission set groups it's included in, in that one click. And when you're on a, permission set group, you'll be able to see which permission sets are included. So let's talk about this age old question. Where is my public group used? Public groups can be used all over the platform and there is no way to actually really tell where it's being used. You have to be really good with SQL to figure this out. So what if I give you a summary on public groups? <laughs> I'm super excited to announce that this is coming in the summer release. And while this isn't everything that a public group grants access to, it is the most used areas. So you'll be able to see which sharing rules the public group is referenced in, which report and dashboard folders the public group is granting access to, what public groups this public group is also included in, and which list views by object are granted with this public group. Do you want to see these summary views in action? All right. So we're back on our user and now let's click on the view access summary button. And in one click, I'm now able to see the user access summary and I can see which user permissions this user has access to, which object permissions they have and the level of access, which field permissions and I can sort it by object, which custom permissions the user has access to, which public group this user has access to, and which queues, all in one click, and you will have this in the summary of this. Now, let's go back to our user and let's look at permission set assignments and let's look at the related list. What if we gave you a button there that you could just view the summary right from there? And so here in one click, you can see what this permission set is granting access to. You can see which permission set groups this permission set is included in. You can see the user permissions, the object permissions, the field permissions, and the custom permissions. And what you're seeing here is consistency. We're bringing consistent experiences to set up, and this is just the start. Now, let's go back to our user record, and let's go to the permission set group assignments. And again, on the view summary, and very quickly, let's run through this. We can see the user permissions that are enabled, the object permissions, field permissions, custom permissions. Again, the same experience, building that consistency in setup. Now let's go back to our user, and let's go to the public group related list. And so now, I'm looking at the public group summary. So this shows you which owner-based sharing rules that the public group is used in, which criteria-based sharing rules the public group is used in, which report and dashboard folders and the level of access this public group is granting access to. Imagine how many clicks that would have been for you to figure that out. 
which public groups this public group is also included in, and which list views by object that this public group is granting access to. Are you all excited as I am for this? <laughs> now, let's take a look at our journey so far. When we first did this session in 2022, we did a pretty good job. We retired 14,000 points from the idea exchange. We delivered permission sets in the field creation wizard and made some much needed enhancements to delegated admin. And then we stepped it up in 2023. I stood here at Trailblazer DX last year in front of all of you and said I was challenging my teams to deliver 100,000 points from the idea exchange. And we did. We delivered 128,000 points by delivering the ability for you to report on permission set assignment as well as a select all on field level security, which I know so many of you have sent me so many nice tweets about. <laughs> and so what's next? What's our next big goal? Our next stop, 250,000 points delivering on some really true to the core features. We're going to be delivering all of those summaries we showed you, as well as things like user history tracking. Yes. <laughs> as well as we're going to continue on doing some more permission splits around our super permissions, which I know many of you ask me about all of the time. So now we just spoke about what the future is, what's coming next and what's now. I'm gonna pass it over to Jamin to talk about what's in the future. Thank you, everyone. Can we give Ben and Cheryl a round of applause? This, what you just seen, would not happen without their leadership. And I know the confetti's already fallen, but I want to grab a few handfuls and throw some up for more people. We have a tremendous teams of engineers that are working behind the scenes to make this future possible. And so I want to give them a round of applause, too. All right. So now I have the wonderful privilege of giving you all a glimpse into the future. The future is also the future. We still have work to do, and we are so excited to share with you some of the things that we're working on. And we're going to start our journey into the future by talking about permissions. So how many of you have spent precious time pouring through our help documentation, going through Trailhead, trying to understand the world of permissions? How do they relate to permission sets, permission set groups? What's this thing about licensing affecting permissions? It's confusing. We have basically required you all to earn master's degrees and forensic science to put it all together. We want to change that. What if we brought everything you need to know about permissions into a single view? Imagine a new permissions view where you could see all of the permissions across your organization, see the required license associated with it, its dependencies, get a sense of the general impact that that permission has across your organization. What if we described what the permission does? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and what if we could show you all the related permission sets, permission set groups, and profiles associated with that permission? And even better, what if we could show you a full list of all of the users in your org to whom that permission is applied? What do you think? All right. We are going to take the guesswork out of working with permissions. But we're not done. We also know, admins, that the way that you work revolves around two things. It's all about users, and it's all about objects. The experience you're greeted with when you log into setup today, though, that's not what you're greeted with. Instead, it looks like something that re represents our org chart. And we have done you all a disservice in that. We want to start writing that course and make our tools work better for the way that you work. And that's why we want to take all of the goodness that Ben and Cheryl have showed you that we've started to apply in the user section of setup and bring it to you in Object Manager. Imagine being able to see, clicker, there we go, a record access view that would give you insight into all of the sharing rules that govern the read and write access your users have to a record. 
Imagine a new object access view that would show you all of the permission sets and permission set groups that govern your CRUD for each object. Now, <laughs> we've heard that these views, these summary views are really helpful for you. They're saving you time. They're surfacing information and answering your common questions. But what if we go one step further? And what if we made it so that you could do inline edit? <laughs> It's the little things. <laughs> Big things. <laughs> All right. This next one is super exciting. You've been asking for it for nearly 18 years. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I want you to know we've heard you. We've received your coins. I'm so excited to be able to share with you that we are going to make it easier for you to create users by introducing the ability to clone. Think of all the time you spend today creating users. It's tedious, it's manual, it's hard. In the future, it's going to be as easy as click and clone. So imagine from the user list view or from a user record being able to click clone, not only being able to copy all of the general information about a user, but also their entitlements. The permission sets, permission set groups, public group memberships, queue memberships. Right? Think of all the time this is going to save you. OK. So now, let's talk about troubleshooting. Ben shared earlier that we know 20% of your time today is spent in troubleshooting. How can we make that easier for you? Well, we've got a couple of ideas. First of all, we know that when you're troubleshooting, one of the common things you're doing is you're looking at user A and you're looking at user B, right? User A can do something, user B can't. Why? And today, you have to go into each record, do all the sleuthing, then you have to go into another one, do all the sleuthing, and then try to put the puzzle pieces together. What if we made that easier for you? What if we gave you a view where you could see a comparison between two or more users? Imagine being able to select users and seeing a row-by-row -row comparison of all the permissions they have in common, all the permissions that are different. What do you think? And of course, we know that in order to actually make the change, you're going to need to know the permission sets, permission set groups and the profiles that are associated with each permission. Now, we're talking about this in the ability to compare users, but we also want to give you those same comparison tools to work for permission sets, permission set groups, and profiles. <laughs> OK, so we think that's going to help you a lot with your troubleshooting, but we want to go even farther. Now, what we've heard from all of you is that it would be really nice to be able to just say the thing that you're trying to troubleshoot and get an answer, right? How many times are you digging into a problem and it's so easy to say? In fact, sometimes you're like, I just want to shout the problem. The problem is easy to say. The challenge is translating it into the action that you're going to need to find the action. And that's because we've made you learn our language. We've made you learn our system. What if we gave you a new co-pilot experience that changes that? Imagine a co-pilot for admin experience that is specialized in helping you troubleshoot your issues with user access. Let's make it possible for you to use your language to describe the challenge and get an answer right away. What do you think? OK, so admins, when we, can, when we pair this co-pilot experience with all the other things that we're introducing, we imagine a future for all of you that makes you more efficient. It saves you time. It gives you more confidence as you do your very important work. Thank you for your feedback. We hear you. We hope you feel heard. And I'm going to turn the time back over to Cheryl now. Thank you so much, Shaman. What an incredible future for admins. Now, we've shown you a lot of things today. So we want to talk about our plan. And I want to make you a promise. We will continue to prioritize true to the core and improving admin experiences. Your productivity and quality of life is our top priority. And I hope that shows through in what we're delivering in the summer release, as well as what you will see on my roadmap. So let's actually talk about the roadmap. So in the summer release, you will have the first set of experiences improving your admin experience. You will have summaries on user, 
We will, the permission set and permission set group summary will go GA. User access policies will go GA, as well as you will have the first version of the public group summary. Now, let's talk about winter. So you saw that great user access summary, and you saw what user permissions and field permissions and object permissions that that user has access to, but how are they actually getting that access? That's the next step to the user access summary. We're also, we heard you, we've demoed some of the experiences that we're going to bring in the uh, public group summary and the consistent feedback we hear is we need to see what apex and flows are referencing those public groups, so that's also gonna come. Also, the access summary and object manager that Jamin showed, we're also targeting the winter release for that as well, but that will be view only, that'll be version one. And then for troubleshooting, we're looking at delivering our first version of Copilot to help you troubleshoot object CRUD and field level security, as well as some general enhancements. We're splitting the managed user permission again, and you'll have the ability <laughs> to give a user the ability to view login history without the full managed user's permission and the ability to freeze users without the full managed user's permission. <laughs> And this is one of the why Salesforce <laughs> questions I get, is why don't we have a description on public groups and queues that's coming in the winter release as well. Now let's talk about spring 25 plus. Now all, not all of this is coming in spring. This is spring, summer, winter. I just couldn't do like, you know, a, a, a slide that big. But we're gonna continue improving the admin experience. You will get that editability in object manager that we showed you. Inline edit of list views. We're targeting to move the user list view into Lightning and giving them that experience. Um, user, permission set, permission set group, role, Q, uh, public groups, queue, all of those experiences. Yes, Apex sharing, somebody asked me that this morning. We're moving all those experiences to Lightning. Also, um, that page on the user permissions that Jamin showed you, I'm calling that user permission discovery right now. I don't know if that's a name that's gonna stick, but that we're targeting uh, sometime next year as well. And um, also continuing on the path for troubleshooting, as well as the ability to clone users, field history tracking on user, as well as some much needed delegated admin enhancements. So, Again, we want to remind you, feedback is an absolute gift. We wanna know what you think of this session. Please give us feedback. Give us feedback on the experiences. Please keep posting in the future of user management and giving us feedback as you're trying our features. And um, I wanna mention we have another session tomorrow. I'm actually presenting with Andrew tomorrow on admin best practices for user management. So if you're a newer admin or want a refresher, that's a great session for you. As well as make sure you check out our demo booths with all of my colleagues. And we have one specifically for permissions and security controls over in Platform Park. And if you want more product, make sure you head to True to the Core this afternoon. It's gonna be an amazing session, as well as I will be at roundtables with the product leadership. I'll be there uh, today as well as tomorrow.